I done made it out the like a firefighter. What it do, my peeps? Yo, what it do? Thank y'all for tuning in too, by the way. Um I appreciate you guys' support. Thank you for constantly coming back, checking out my page and content and listening to my fucking story. So thank you guys. Feel free to, y'all, as we're having this live, I love, honestly, I love hearing from you guys um, and answering your questions. So let me try to tap Taryn back in, but I need, I would love for you guys to tap in. I don't see where Taryn is. Taryn, I don't see you. Can you request? Because I don't see you. All right, let me see if, can you send a request? Cause I see you, all right, hold on, go live, yeah. Thank y'all. I'm back. back. All right. Cool. Can you hear me? Yeah, I don't know, it was like, it's, it's happening again. Like a little loading circle thingy. Yeah, I think it's definitely you. Can you hear me? Cause now? I can still see the comments and whatnot. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, let me. I done made it out there fire like a firefighter. What's up, y'all? Talk to me. What it do? What it do? Taryn is breaking up. Super, 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 super. But like I said, feel free to tap in and uh, come in with some questions. If y'all got questions, um. I'm here to talk about it. I'm very open about my story. Um, so, you know, just ask away. That's what this live is about. Basically me telling my story and uh, just how I overcame it, the process, the mindset, um, what I've learned from it, what is my goals for the next upcoming time. I appreciate that. Being inspired by my fits. Yeah, fashion is about being comfortable, my guy. It's not about having drip and designer this, designer that. That shit is nice, I won't lie, but it's about just putting it together, being comfortable, not having it force. Hey, chill out. Can you sit? Thank you. All right, let's go, Taryn. Absolutely. I don't mind sharing my story. I really don't. Okay. Can you All right. Me? Yeah, you 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 super clear right now. Wow, okay. So now you're gonna have to send this to me. All right, all right. Okay. Uh, so I'll just save it and then I'll send it to you. Okay, awesome. So we're back with, with part two for Terrell. Okay, so yeah. Terrell, before you left off, you were telling us about your story, about your dad. Pick up where yes. we left. Um, I think I left off just talking about when I got my five year sentence. Um, mom, family, sad. I had so much support in the courtroom because they was even surprised that I was doing this stuff. Um, so then I got shipped out to North Carolina, which was like three, four hours away from home. Um, and then it I, it kind of set in for me. I was like, all right, like this is my home for the next like five years. Like this is like legit, like this is it. Like there's nothing I can possibly do. There's no letter I can write. There's no having my mom plea or like this is it. And I took a plea deal, um, basically admitting to my crimes. So therefore I couldn't appeal for like a, a sentence or any of that. Um, and then while in prison, um, because a lot of people don't know that my mom, when they ran in my house, got arrested. Um, they had guns to my whole family. And so that hit me the most, it hurt. And to not think about that and stress, I began to like work out. I seen all these guys working out. And I just started reading like magazines, men's health magazines. I was like, oh wow, like damn, this is the proper way to do squats. Like, oh, like this is the proper way to do a plank. You should eat um, protein after your workouts. You should mm -hmm. eat 20 grams of carbs. And I was like, damn, I never knew this. And so I would apply it as much as possible because of my circumstances, like the diet there is, is the worst. But I would 
try to adhere to the magazines and stuff that I was reading as close to po as possible. And uh, before you know it, maybe like five to six months, I think I just got in shape. Um, guys was just like, damn, like, you were in shape. And I was like, damn, really? But I, I, I couldn't see it. And every day I would go out and I would do my routine. And I would notice like more and more guys were coming like, oh, damn, can we like work out with you? Like, that's like, you, you're in shape. Like, you're the top guy here now. Like, and I was like, and it was an older guy who had been in a long, long time. Me and him kind of clicked. Uh, I don't know what it was, but we kind of clicked. And he became like a like a big brother. Like he And he was there for a while. And he was from D.C. And so we took a liking to each other. And he pulled me to the side one day. He was like, yo, I don't know if you see it, but from the outside looking in, you have a talent. You have a gift. Can't any person come in here and have 20 to 25 guys following their workout routine. One, they gotta respect you. Two, you gotta be in some type of shape. Three, you gotta have some type of leadership, like ability to do that. You get what I'm saying? Cause he said, it's something he was like, I've been in 15 years. And now I, I, I don't even do that. Like I've never done that. And I was like, damn, he was like, and I was like, what's your purpose of saying that? Like, I appreciate it, obviously. But he was like, you know, you can make money in society. Now I've been doing it. I'm like, all right, I got a year left. And when he said that, initially, I'm like, trainer, I've never, like, I've never known a trainer. I've never known it to be a cool thing. I didn't know that they made money. And so I kind of brushed it off. And I already kind of had a plan that I was going to, like, go work at a restaurant for, like, two years. I was going to save every dollar and invest into the stock market and do real estate. And that wasn't the plan God had for mm -hmm. me. So now I'm released from prison. I'm working the restaurant that I said I was gonna work, literally three to four weeks in it. I'm like, this is not it. Like, uh, <laughs> this is not it. I could never do a year or two here, two years at a restaurant. And it hit, I was like, maybe I'll give this training thing a try. Like maybe it's not that bad. And so I had told my mom, I was like, hey mom, like I'm probably gonna quit. I saved up my four weeks worth of money I can give that to you for rent. Cause I know at this time she's like, look, you need to be helping me out with rent. And I'm like, mom, I've been home a month. Like, <laughs> why are you doing this to me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so she was like, that's a stupid idea. I hate it. Like you need to keep that job. Like, ooh. and it was kind of like a battle, but I, I always knew I had wasted, not wasted, but I spent five years of time that I couldn't get back. And I've told myself since release that I will always do what I wanted to do, like what made me genuinely happy and not what anybody else wanted. Cause I don't have any more time to waste. Like I don't have any more. And so I was just like, all right, mom, this is the plan. I'm going to do it. Um, and so I had ran out of money. I bought fitness equipment. I bought a, the exam certification and I had ran out of money and she was like, all right, it's your time to go. And I was like, damn, like not even 90 days out into society. And now in retrospect, that was probably the greatest thing that happened to me because once I was kicked out, moved to a friend's house. He had a nice gym and I started training at his gym and documented my workouts. And then like, I just started growing like this following of people that, was, mm -hmm. that knew me that was like, wow, you really changed your life. Like you love what you're doing, start supporting. I had the new gym, so I was up in my prices. Next thing you know, I got a deal to work at this other super nice facility um, in uh, Adams Morgan, uh, like mm -hmm. Woody Park area. And that's where I met Pusha T, a guy that knew my dad, uh, was like, hey, I know you in this area. I got a guy, he just moved back and I want you to train him. Like, I trust you. I know you've been doing your thing. And so when this guy walks in, he's 15 minutes late. I didn't know it was Pusha T. So he's 15 minutes late. So I'm sitting there, I'm kind of pissed cause I'm like, this is my time. Like you're wasting my time, bro. <laughs> like, and so he walks in and he's like, talking to the front desk lady, cause I'm sitting here on the opposite side. He was like, yeah, I'm looking for uh, like trail. And then I looked, I was like, yo, that's me. I was like, what's good? I shook his hand, but mind you, I was still pissed. So I wasn't like fully <laughs> focused. And I look and in my head, I'm like, damn, this dude looks like Pusha T, right? But I never mentioned it. He was like, yeah, Terrence. So I'm like, wait, this is not a coincidence. I'm like, Pusha T, he's like, yeah. So I'm like, oh shit, like, <laughs> but, it, everything in me wouldn't allow me to express my, like, I was a fan, but I couldn't, exp I, I, mm -hmm. I don't know the stigma that we have as black men that 
you can't like show, I don't know what it was at the time, but I was just like, oh. And I held my cool, started training him, got like magazines and on the news, they labeled me like, oh, ex-felon trainer, celebrity trainer. And it was just like a lot of stuff coming my way. Then one of the biggest artists from our city, Sha Glizzy, maybe months later DM me and was like, hey, you should come. Or he was just like, hey, like I wanna work out with you. Like I, I love what you're doing. Started training him, went on tour, greatest experience of my life thus far. Mm -hmm. This awesome artist from the city, same age, was like, yo, I like you, I like what you're doing. I'm gonna pay you, I'm gonna pay your rent for you to come three months with me on tour. And I was like, this is unbelievable. Took it, experience of a lifetime, came back home and I've just been soaking it in. But in the midst of all of that, what I forgot to mention is that I had started my own company, mm -hmm. which was um, a prison style workout, right? That hired ex-offenders as like our fitness instructors. And so around the time I was training Pusha T, I was still building my brand. Um, and so the news and magazines, all of that helped uh, shine light on that because I had a lot of guys that were coming home from prison that used to work out with me. Mm -hmm. And I would get calls like from their moms and sisters and like, hey, Steve is home. And I told him like, we seen you on the news and he's proud and he wants to know if you can help him out. And I felt obligated to help these guys out. Like I wanted it to be a lot easier than it was for myself. And so I would pay them like $35 per hour per class to come and help me out. And it's just been going from there. So I'm it, just in it. It is an amazing story. Yeah, you I'm know, just... I'm sure, I mean, we have, you know, just a little bit of time, but I'm, you, you could come back time and time again, because I'm sure there's points to your story that you'll think about, oh, I forgot that. It's just an amazing journey. It's so positive. Somebody said, I, I understand but this is a definition of a true soldier. Amazing. So yeah. I just think it is, it's amazing. It's, a, it's the definition just too of like, you know, you could, have, you could have done a lot of things, right? You could have went right or left, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. that that is so just, it's just so amazing that, you know, you had this um, forethought, this stick to if you will, to, to make, you know, your decisions turn turn to the right way and then you right. also had this creative way of doing it too i think that's pretty cool um the way you you know you creative creatively you know like incorporated your past quote unquote and then you've helped others develop from their past you, right you know what was crazy about that is that initially my people that i like were hanging out with and like discussing my idea for my business, they were like, no, like, we want to keep away from you going to jail, like you're going to scare people. But I was just like, I thought to myself, like, if, if me being, uh, making a mistake in my life at 19 years old and turning my life around and owning what happened, accepting mm -hmm. who I am and sharing that, if that scares you, then I'm probably not for you. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? And that, that was yeah. my mission. I was like, maybe the prison style boot camp, if it scares you, it's probably not for you. And I'm okay with that. Yeah. And I'm always okay with that. So And I think yeah. that, that's cool, right? That's um I, I'm really kind of a, a big nut about showing up authentically. Yeah, absolutely. And absolutely. I think that that is a true testament to being authentic to yourself. Absolutely. You know, I take pride I'm in that. I'm big on that. I've had, you know, my own experiences and, and they've taught me that, you know, I can only, there's only, I can only be me. And right. I hope mm -hmm. you love that, but you know, I know that not everybody will. And uh, I know that I'm untraditional in some of the ways I, some of the things I take on. And right. I mean, I just, you know, my prime is able to even my hair, you know, people say, Oh my right. gosh, what is your, right. husband say? your hair? Don't, a law woman should have hair. And I'm like, you know what? He cuts my hair. So, right. love, you know, it's like bonding for us. So right, right, right. Makes sense. Authentic, authenticity. You can't beat it. You know, you cannot beat it. So what, yeah. what kind of advice would you give someone? Because there could be someone listening who's thinking to themselves, you know, can I do it? Right. They may not have the same exact, uh, exact journey, but they may be thinking to themselves, I'm young. Maybe I've been in some type of, you know, trouble if you will how can right. i try 
this around? Like, what gave you that, that will, that passion to turn this around? What advice would you give to them? Um, I think initially it started with the whole, the whole fact about my mom and family having guns and whatnot pointed at their hair. For me, I, I, I looked and I was like, damn, like my actions don't only affect me. Mm. Cause had my mom been shot or lost her job, whatever, mm -hmm. I would have never forgiven myself. And from then I knew, I was just like, all right, Trail, you have to understand that your actions don't only affect you, they affect other people, not mm -hmm. including the people that you sold these drugs to, who you've affected and took money out of these kids' mouths because their mom wanted to buy whatever you were selling. Not mm -hmm. only that, but your family is being affected. My grandmother was 77, had a heart attack two weeks later, and that shit like set on my mind. And I was just like, you know what? So it, even if I, like, it's, at least for my family. But having that mindset of doing it for my family, it just transitioned over to like doing it for myself. Mm -hmm. Like I wanted better for myself. I wanted, I knew my potential. Um, and I just, I don't know, it was just a light switch for me that was just like, this is not it. Like, I don't know of successful fucking drugs, excuse my language, I don't know a successful yeah. drug dealer. Like I can't point one person out that said he's successful millionaire from selling drugs. Like I just didn't know one. So I was like, there's has to be another way. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so that was oh, it. It was definitely my family. E4.D says he stepped out of his comfort zone. Absolutely. Absolutely. When I first came <clears throat> out to society, my friends would clown me. Oh, you let prison change you. Oh, you mm -hmm. weak now. Are you scared? And I was like, you're right. Prison changed me. And I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. like, I'm okay. Like, I didn't go to jail to stay the same. Like, I don't, I don't want to do that. <laughs> like, that mm -hmm. five years, I don't know, maybe it was a punk-ass five years to you, but that was five years that I could not get back. Five mm -hmm. years when my mm -hmm. little brother, who was 13 at the time, started acting up in school and getting bad grades. Five years when my mom had to fend for herself and provide. I was like, oh, bro. That's not man shit to me. That's not man. A man is a person who protects and provides for his family at all costs. And if you're mm -hmm. in prison, of course you got guys that do whatever they do and can provide for their family, but that's, there's no way you can do that from a day. So it was bigger than me. Yeah, I think, and, and I think, I think you might've said it here at the end, but um, something you said, you know, this is bigger than me, right? Or, or it's like this purpose that you have is bigger than yourself. Right. And I think you've connected to something and you are going towards, because that's agree. about being authentic, right? Yeah, hey, uh -huh. Kyrie, what's up? Um, is about being connected to something bigger than yourself. Absolutely. And, be, and realizing that, to your point, this doesn't just affect me. Absolutely. Like, it, it affects, um, you know, everyone around you. Absolutely. And probably that whole thing about the butterfly and the wings where it flaps its wings and there's a something on the other end you know it's a ripple effect right right absolutely to, to what you do and that's a I great example in that is recognizing that someone's asking a question here they said do you think cutting people out of your life is worth worth it for self self-improvement like i mean like everyone so here's here's what i've learned is that the moment that you start living in your purpose you become comfortable with yourself and live the way that you want to live your life, you'll notice that certain people will start to fall off just naturally mm -hmm. because it's not the same way. You get what I'm saying? So when I was walking around with my pants like super high, my friends like, you're weird. This is me. I own it. This is what I'm, you get what I'm saying? And naturally, I just wasn't interested in the same things they wanted to do. I, I, I wasn't interested in shooting craps at two in the morning outside. Like I wasn't interested in going to the casino. I wasn't interested in buying 20 bottles at the club. So naturally, we, we separated. So it's like naturally. Mm -hmm. So to sum that up. So so basically it was it was kind of a natural progression. It wasn't Absolutely. really, you know, you Absolutely. did it quote unquote to, uh, 
you know, specifically move that along. It just happened. Absolutely. Naturally. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's about, again, following your purpose and being authentic to yourself and, you know, realizing that you have a goal, you have a North star and you're going to get to it. And, you know, if people want to come along, they can, if people don't want to come along, they don't have to. That's fine. It's fine yeah. with me. Self-investment is the training for being a better you in the battlefield. Exactly. Um, someone says the way he dedicated a basketball game with his, with his patients to see the game in slow-mo before executing a play is when I knew he was destined for greatness. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like a lot of people here, you know, I think, uh, you know, a lot of the comments are knowing, right, that, you, you know, knowing you know that you can be great. Absolutely. Right? I, I, like, I, not to sound cocky, but I knew, like, I'm not your typical dummy. Mm -hmm. Like, I knew I possessed some type of intelligence that was useful to society, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. So, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I don't think it sounds cocky at all. I think we, you know, I, I like I said, I have some of the same sentiments. And I think, like you said, feeling that and knowing yourself. And, it's, and I think what's interesting about your circumstance, and you can tell me if I'm right or wrong, I'm sure your five years... Um, let's say, expedited you finding out about yourself. You know? Absolutely. <laughs> Some people Absolutely. May, may not know about themselves until a little later in life, but I'm sure Absolutely. that you pushed it along. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Hands down. Yeah. <laughs> Hands so, down. So it's good to, um, but I think it's also good that you took that talent and now you're helping others, you know, find themselves. Whether it be, I mean, I think your story is, um, I think your story is about fitness, mm -hmm. but I think your story most of all is about inspiration. Absolutely. And fitness just happens to be the way you do it. Absolutely. I tell people that all the time. You know? Like, I use fitness as my tool to motivate and show you that there's a way. Mm -hmm. There's a way. I love, I'm not sure if people follow it, but there's this philosophy and it's called like uh, stoicism. And it's basically about knowing the things that you can control versus the things that you can't control. First, knowing the difference. Mm -hmm. All right. Secondly, the things that you control, can control, you focus your energies and effort on that. You get what I'm saying? And so mm -hmm. that's kind of how I live. I preach that to anybody that's around me. I I walk that, I believe that, I live that. This is not something that I just just talk about. Because people suffer from stress, people suffer from a lot of things, and it's a lot of times from things that sometimes you can't control. Mm -hmm. Like, I understand death. We all, death is sad. But it's, it's, like, it's something I can't control, and I know that. And so I'm not as stressed. I'm not as sad, because I know there was something higher than me that allowed or wanted this to happen. And so I kind of stick to that like philosophy. So we are rounding up. So if you, if you are just on, um, so my Instagram, for whatever reason was acting crazy. And so we're now we're on Charles Instagram. So this is just like you everyday people, amazing stories. I actually have the show every Tuesday on my Instagram live at 7 30 PM. I'm in Chicago central standard time. So please make sure you join us. If you have a story or know someone who does, please make sure you get in contact with me. I would love to have you on the show and um, share your story just like Trell. And Trell, to wrap it up, I know you had two other things that we didn't talk about. And I know, like, I called you a style expert. So I don't know if you deem yourself a style expert, but I deemed you a style expert because I watched your, your, uh, your Instagram. Uh -huh. And I am not a style expert, so I'm far from <laughs> And then also you are vegan, yeah? Yeah. So what? So with those two things, I mean, and, and all you have going on, what's the future hold? Because I feel like there's so many things in the works for you that you've been blessed to, to um, you know, to, what's the word? I think you created them. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't think they were given to you. I think you've created them. So right. what is the future hold for you? Um, so... Even with like the fashion um, piece, I, I'm not sure if people, anybody that's been following me when I had like 300 followers or a thousand followers, they know I always say 
my favorite, favorite quote is fall in love with the process. I think people oftentimes, they try to focus on the outcome. Oh, I'm doing this so I can be a millionaire. I'm doing this. And honestly, I think that's the wrong approach. Um, but back to the point is that I try to document my journey. So mm -hmm. me doing style tips is me learning with you. I'm not the, quite the expert. Some might say I'm an expert. <laughs> but I just, I just, what, what I learn, I like to teach because I never know what one thing could change somebody's life, uh, change somebody's, uh, you get what I'm saying? Whether that's yeah. fitness, how to do a push up, like, like how to color coat, like you wear brown with a dark green, like whatever that is. If I learn it, you're going to learn it. And we learn together. And I, I kind of love that process. I want people to follow my process more so than my outcome. Yeah. So I, 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 that's like, that's just how, what I am. That's just what I'm more. My husband has the thing. He says, commit to the process. Absolutely. That's the his process. And, yeah. Uh, and, and I think it's cool because like I was, I mean, I, I was learning from color blocking the other day. I was like, oh, I can color block. You know what I mean? Like, um, you know, I'm not, but I can learn from this whole color blocking tutorial. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Oh, for sure. Okay. Get this. Well, I really appreciate your time. Um, I know we're, we're going to, uh, you know, I'm sure people will say, you know, they want to hear more. I'm going to try to have some people back on, um, can kind of continue their stories because I've gotten a few requests for people to come back on. So right. again, I really appreciate your time and your talent. And Thank you. you know, if there's anything from the Chicago side that I could ever do for you or your family, please reach out. We're here. We're freezing right now, but we're here. So, um, <laughs> but Chicago's a great city. I love DC. My family is, is back there in Northern Virginia. Right. So, uh, Kyrie, thanks again for hooking us up. And we Thank are, you, Kyrie. Um, I don't know, yeah, we're on both of our Instagram, our Instagram live. This is just like you, everyday people, amazing stories. I am back here every Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Please make sure you join us. This is episode number 35, part two. So I'm going to try to get this from trial and post this on my IGTV, my Instagram. I'll send it, um, I'll send part one back to you, trial. And we'll get it together. Uh, you'll help me. All right, perfect. Again, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate no, it. Thank I just you. Really appreciate your story. I mean, I just think it's so wonderful. You know, I, I just, um, like I said, authenticity has been something I've lived by. I've shared my story for a long, before Instagram, I was sharing my story in magazines and, and on stages. And, you know, I just, I just really look, look to, you know, inspire others. And I love to connect with people that inspire others. Right. You know, it's about sense. inspiration. It's about love. It's about sharing your story. And no story is too big. No story is too small. And everybody has a story. And everybody can learn from your story. So I really appreciate your time. I appreciate your talent. I'm going to continue to follow you um, for fitness and for style tips and yeah. for recipes and whatever you uh put out there i've been trying to i i definitely the vegan thing is definitely of interest to me because because of people. so i am definitely trying to uh you know move towards that lifestyle so i oh thank you sissy i love you too i've definitely been trying to move towards that lifestyle so i'm gonna keep following you and if you have anything and you need anything All right, right, yeah. i got you so All right, thank, you. thank you so much I'm going to thank save this and send it to you. Okay. And you be blessed, okay? Right. And thank you so much for joining right. us. We'll be back next Tuesday. Bye-bye.